So then the question begs, what are the proxies that we should, we should be looking at for a good worker? Very good question. So what would you... We have a good article for that. We do have a great article for it. So what would you... <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you rank... So you're, you're somebody who goes into the gym and gets upset or questions their effectiveness of their training because they didn't achieve their DOMS. Yeah. Where would you want that person to avert their attention to? Performance metrics. Performance. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do more than last week? Yeah. Because even yeah. if you sandbag your first two weeks, if you do more than last week for long enough, you'll find it. Yeah. And then you just get better at the first week. Yeah. I think over time. Um, and that is like the underlying, like if I do a client check-in, that's the first thing I look at. Yeah. What was your accumulated volume for the week? Did you lift more than last week? Yeah. If you did, we're good. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, we're not good. Like yeah. that's, and then everything else comes after that. Yeah. Why? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, personally from a less analytical point of view, from a less co co coaching view, like I said, I like to know the next day that like I can feel the thing that I trained. Like it feels for lack of a better term, disrupted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There that's over the session over the week. Did you do more? Yeah. Yeah, I think like even if you to add another layer to the performance, I would also like obviously want to rank my effort. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, what what kind of effort did I give into that session? Like, you know, like this week the effort was not there. Yeah. But it was purposeful. I mean, like it, it felt hard, but I know I could do more. Yeah. Like so yeah, you know, it's like that just the cost. It's like the perceived exertion was high, yeah, but yeah. my body's ability to exert was low. Yeah. Does that make sense? You yeah. know what I mean? So that's where that whole like it's like I was so far away from RIR, but my RPE was high. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So there's that whole yeah, kind of... Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 And that's where those those um, scales of effort can coexist. It's just like how many fucking variables do you put in a program, man? Yeah. It's like, so you put RPE 10, but your RIR at four. Like, yeah. It's just like... Yeah. You know. I look at that too. Like my average... This is my strength books gives us the... Um, yeah. Your perceived exertion for the workout. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is sick. I Session love that. Effort, I, that's something that I look at a lot. And it's like, you can tell some people just put eight all the time. It's like, yeah. actually think about it because it's actually an important stat. Yeah, 100%. Because if your volume load's not going up and your perceived exertion staying the same, work harder. Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> or like yeah. if you pe your perceived exertion goes up all of a sudden, yeah, we need to know. Mm. Or if it's going down, that's 100%. a positive, but it probably means that there's more room 100%. to turn the dial especially up. when uh, you got the other metrics as well it's like if the sleep's poor and the RPE is high but the training performance is low yeah then it's like yeah. we, we didn't progress we start finding the culprit yeah we start we have to dive a little bit deeper then yeah. it's like you know all of this stuff gives us information it's like turns us into rain man and we can kind of fix out fix your problems guys yeah, yeah exactly. it's not just it's not just cool shit that like we just do Useless for the sake starter. of it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like, it's Look all this there. this cool app that writes things down. Yeah, it's all there for a reason. It's like, um, what was I saying to someone the other day? I was like, everything we do is hypothetical. Yeah. Right? Like, we're always like, it's probably this. Yeah. And, you so know. change this and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't have, so usually with a hypothesis, like, you, you'll come at that with like, really, really, really good logic. Yeah. So the less... The less logic you have, which is the less data points for us. Mm -hmm. So like your RPE is not real. Like you know, yeah. they just go oh, eight. So it's yeah, like yeah. You know, kind of hard, not hard, not yeah. hard. You know, so kind of something. Like their their ben, readiness. Ben won't yell at me if it's an eight. He won't call me out. He <laughs> yeah. won't call me out for being a bitch. Yeah, but he won't tell me I'm overshooting. Yeah. The the readiness scores are like threes across the board yeah. of five or three and a halves out of fives. Yeah. You know, and and yeah, everything else is kind of just like there. That's creating a really weak hypothesis yeah. for your coach to suggest yeah. this next move for us mm -hmm. is gonna accelerate Correct. your results. Yeah. You know. Um so it was a little bit of a tangent, but like no, that yeah. makes you know, makes or breaks the effectiveness of the coaching. Yeah, it's it is a tangent, but it's not because it's like the people who are worried about DOMs, the lens is too zoomed in. Yeah, they're majoring in minors. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was, like sometimes people ask questions that 
the gap in knowledge that's shown by asking the question becomes really challenging to even answer the question. Yeah. So it's like, what exercise should I do for my glutes? Yeah. It's like, ugh. Yeah. You know where what I mean? Like the gap yeah. between your per- your perceived knowledge from that for where you want to be to actually understand what it is involved in growing glutes yeah, is too far almost. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, I can give you a subjective answer and say like hinge, extend, squat. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you can tell they're just not doing enough. Yeah, and then it, but then it's like okay, so the next layer to that is like volume, train shortened range, yeah. train mm-hmm. lengthened range, train multiple times per week, be in a caloric surplus, sleep enough. Yeah, like take it to enough proximity of failure. Stop doing finishes that feel good. Like, how big yeah. do we fucking build this thing to answer what was an an innocently short question just because they don't understand the gap between yeah. what they're asking and what we consider when we or answer a question like it. that. Yeah. So when you say like, oh, I'm not sore, that's just a representation of your understanding of the overall package that goes into performance improvement, hypertrophy, et cetera. Yeah. Like you, you, it's just showing like you, it's just where you don't are. have a grasp of all the moving parts that happen yeah. here yeah, and you've just attached yourself to a metric which of all the metrics is probably not a terrible one because it's like it's making you train hard mm. and you, if you're chasing soreness you're chasing work ethic and chasing rep and reserve chasing high RPEs yeah like the intent is probably a, a positive there yeah but as you become more aware and obviously what we try and do with our clients because we we kind of preach this autonomy over dependency model yeah. it's like okay so Soreness isn't the thing. It's progressive overload. It's mm. what's data, what's improving, what's not improvement, it's yeah. measurements, it's photos, it's progression over to- time, it's load on the bar, it's reps, it's total volume, it's recovery, it's all of these things yeah. that are part of it. And actually, usually what happens is like, hey, you had a few weeks off. We've got two options. I can ease you back in for three weeks and you won't be a sore or you can just fucking deal with it for a week and then you'll be okay. Yeah. And that's like, that's the mo- the biggest conversation I've had about soreness in the last six months. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. Do you want to suffer a lot for a short time or a little bit for longer? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. The only other proxy that I think would be a valuable, not the only other, but another valuable proxy I think would be... <laughs> Sorry, I just went on the biggest tangent. <laughs> no, no. That's what I was like, trying to bring this back. Um, it's in under that performance is how you performed. Yeah. So like how you did yeah, your yeah. reps, so your technique um, within those those sets and, and you can review that performance in the session. Mm. You can give yourself a bit of a review uh, after that whole workout of like how did I perform today overall with my, um, my movements themselves. And you can also do that set to set and you can also do that rep to rep. You know, you yeah. and I would, yeah. you and I would make that evaluation Correct. every single rep we do. It's like, yeah. oh, uh, rocks too forward on this one. Uh, chin position wasn't here. Didn't mm. posture up through the chest when I rode back. Like, <clears throat> there's there's an assessment criteria that when you become an advanced lifter, like you would do in space at that given immediate time. You might film your sets afterwards. Uh, one of the reasons why we do that, which we advocate, is like it might feel hard, but did it look it? Yeah. So like my last two reps on that row that I filmed on Instagram the other, the other yesterday. I was like, these are like half range of motion. Yeah. And they're so slow. Yeah. And they were. And they were fine. Yeah. Like it was like, yeah. you know, 90% of the range of motion and the speed was pretty good. Yeah. So it was like. Talking to powerlifters in that too. Yeah. Fuck. Because it feels slow. Yeah. Because it's hard. It's what, like, you what know, you can see versus what you feel sometimes is like, put your feelings in the bin. <laughs> yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. And then, yeah. So that you can obviously like, and go, all right, like, you know, reference points and like, you know, re- range of motion for the exercise, acceptable, acceptable range of motion too, which is like, you know, what are you willing to let go of? Like, yeah. what are you willing to kind of like, you know, um, let go of as you fatigue? Mm-hmm. Cause like, yeah, I don't really subscribe to like not performing. Like, you know, you got this whole standard range of motion and it's like, once you can't meet that whole standard range of motion, you should stop. Yeah. I just don't know if that's really that valuable yeah. for an advanced trainee, it's like, yeah. what if they can get 75% of that rep? What if they can get yeah. 50%? Like 
what if they need to kind of do a couple of use a little bit of momentum to get a couple out like is that really that value like like is that giving someone a disservice and you know maybe they need to do that in the last like kind of couple weeks of their program just kind of get a little bit more yeah kind of stress and stimulus on the muscle like i don't know again it's that i haven't used it for a couple of weeks here we go once you know the rules you can break them. that's it yeah. so it's like as pts we have this good intention of everyone has to have perfect form and move really well and be under control and blah 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 blah, blah. but it's like if you can lift your elbows a little bit during your last four reps of bicep curls and you get an extra four reps yeah you still did more work net on the biceps yeah so it's like yeah so you did more work on the biceps yes like you know front delts probably worked a little bit more yeah but it's you, like if you're swinging from rep one correct that's shit yeah but yeah and this is the hardest thing and it, you start to put your can i don't want to say consumer but like general gym goer hat on and you're like fuck man because like someone who interprets perfect tech perfect uh complete access to range of motion at all times for all reps their rep and reserve and their failure looks different yeah so bicep curl for example if my elbows have to stay locked just in front of my hips so i maintain constant tension throughout the bicep for the entire rep even maybe pushing my wrist into extension a little yeah. bit so the barbell stays out in front of me creates extra tension at the elbow like that's a perfect rep getting to failure there is one thing getting to failure and allowing the elbow to move a little bit at the very end is another thing. Yeah. Letting the bar stop for three seconds at the bottom of the rep mm. and then going again. It's like there's heaps of coaches that I see all the time. It's usually like on a hack squat or something. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is fucking real training to failure. It's like, but who said? Yeah. What? And if I'm a, a client, I'm like, well, what even is failure? Yeah. If I'm doing a set tempo for every rep, and I can't stand up again, is that failure? Or mm. is it, no, I can't stand up again, so I take a three-second break, and then I do it again, and then next week I take a four-second. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like... Yeah, you got to set the task, right? Fuck! <laughs> yeah, you almost, you almost like, if, to go down that rabbit hole, it's just like, this is... The task is this. Yeah. And if you can't meet this task, this is failure. Yeah. So it's like, if you can't maintain a four-second uh, eccentric, yeah. and a one-second concentric, like, you've now experienced failure, but it doesn't mean you've experienced total muscle failure yeah, because you could failure, speed yeah. you could speed up the reps you yeah. could have a pause like you could yeah. you know do other things where you could get to the point where literally like you can't actually perform anything yeah. which would be like you'd get halfway up and just drop yeah you know that's like muscles don't work no more yeah. you know <laughs> abort uh, yeah. abort <laughs> yeah nervous system says no yeah, yeah. so yeah so I but yeah like I said the question of like how do I grow my glutes thing when you start to layer all of these things in, you can just really mm. see like how hard it would be for people that do think like build, building muscle comes from soreness. Yeah. I had a good session because I'm sore. Like you can see. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's still a symptom uh, and a hangover from thinking that muscle damage yeah. was a major contributor yeah, for yeah. muscle growth. Like, like I said, like, you know, they, they were looking at post-workout protein synthesis rates and mm. there's this you know acute elevation post-workout of this elevation in protein synthesis and they were like, oh, so this means muscle damage would have a correlation yeah. to muscle growth because we're damaging the tissue during the session and you know we're getting this blah, blah, blah. Um, but what it, what it is, is or what it's proposed is that it's your body trying to get you back to that hypothetical baseline because yeah. it, it doesn't stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it drops off. Your like 24 comes, hour and seven day MPS yeah, doesn't you, end You get this huge different. peak and then it comes down. Yeah. You know, and it stays obviously like for a little bit longer than, you know, anything else. Like if you did any other activity that like up, in, increases your muscle protein synthesis, but like, you know, you post work. So then they were like, whatever. So, so then you had all these people and like, you know, we used to, you know, kind of talk shit about certain individuals that preach this like more muscle damage, more muscle growth. Yeah. And it just like kind of really doesn't make any sense now when you think about it. It's like you break something down and you continue to break it down even more. Mm. Who's suggesting that that means that it's going to go like way up? Yeah. You know, like way yeah, yeah. up beyond, you know, the baseline. Especially for a natural athlete. Correct. Yeah. And then when you look at what seems to be the the main driver now 
is mechanical tension. It's like yeah. even like um uh, the metabolic stress thing. It's like I mean, metabolic stress happens when you expose your muscles to me- to mechanical tension. So it's like yeah, how valuable is that one really? Mm-hmm. Possibly, you know, and there's possibly pathways that you know will help increase muscle size, but it seems to just be like mechanical tension is the go. Yeah. So if we know that like we we have this muscle damage and there's this period where our body's trying to recover, wouldn't the goal be to make that window as short as possible so that you can now start making gains? Yeah, yeah. Get you know what I mean? So, so you would almost want to experience as less muscle damage as you potentially could in a workout mm-hmm. whilst exposing your, your muscles to load to yeah, mechanical tension, all muscle fibers, so high threshold, like motor yeah. units, you know, or, you know, even the low threshold ones, if you get the high threshold ones, you're going to get the low ones anyway. And and then give your body a chance to go through that cycle, but then go, cool, we're recovered because there's not a lot of muscle damage. Yeah. Let's use this elevation in, in, in protein synthesis that we've got from the session to now use the protein, to now use the calories, to now use the recovery time to make more tissue. Yeah, And I think that's where now we're seeing this logical logical right now mm-hmm. push towards high intensity low volume training yeah for advanced trainings yeah not yeah, not for yeah. everyone yeah kind of thing 